Hello and welcome back. We're going to look at some, actually we're going to look at a really neat application of unit cell information. And one of the really neat things about unit cells is that essentially all the information you need to know is determined by the unit self itself. So for instance, if we want to know density, uh, then clearly all we need to do is find the mass of a sample and the volume of a sample. And actually if we have a unit cell, then we can just go ahead and we can take the volume of the unit cell and the mass of the atoms inside the unit, vet, the unit cell and calculate the density. And remember that both volume and mass are extensive. They depend on the amount of material. But when you divide them, you get an intensive property, something that doesn't depend on the amount you have. So it seems kind of weird that the mass of a tiny unit cell and the volume of a unit cell can be taken together to find the density, but it definitely works. So perhaps we've got some X-ray diffraction data. So maybe we've measured this unit cell and it's 361 picometers on an edge. So you might say, well, how do you know that? Well, x-ray diffraction, whereby you scatter x-rays at the crystal and the pattern that you get from the diffraction allows you to calculate something like that edge length is where you can get that information from. And also the way the atoms are arranged in the unit cell gives you a slightly different pattern. So maybe this is a uh, face centered cubic unit cell. So you get a particular pattern that allows you to say it's face centered cubic. Can we take that information and can we find the density? And by the way, this is going to be an iron crystal. So it turns out, yes, we can. So uh, density is mass over volume. So let's go ahead and solve for the volume first and then the density second. You'll remember that the units of density are the units of mass over the units of volume. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to work with grams per cubic centimeter just because conventionally in chemistry, that's our unit for density. So let's go ahead and calculate the volume. So the volume is, uh, well, it's a cube. So the volume of a cube is just the length of each side cubed. How long is each side? It's 361 picometers. And we want to try and get that into centimeters cubed. So we're going to convert picometers to centimeters. So we want to go to uh, the base unit, so the meter. So pico means 10 to the minus 12. So a picometer is 10 to the minus 12 of a meter. And uh, centi means 10 to the minus 2. So a centimeter is 10 to the minus 2 of a meter. So we've done that conversion. That conversion gives us A and then we're going to cube the whole shebang. So once we do that, and um, kind of a tricky calculation, but just run along on your calculator and make sure you get the same number I do. And uh, I get 4.70. And uh, I'm going to keep a couple of extra guard digits here. So 4.6 times 10 to the minus 22 of a centimeter cube. So a very, very small number. These unit cells are incredibly tiny, so uh, that's to be expected. And then the next part of the problem is what is the mass? And we're told it's a face-centered cubic unit cell. So remember for a face-centered cubic unit cell, what you have, right, is an atom at each one of the eight corners. So uh, we got a hidden corner right here. Okay, so these are my corners. And remember, each atom at a corner is only one-eighth of the way in. So my number of atoms is I've got eight atoms at the corners, and each corner is only one-eighth in. And then what makes it face center cubic is that there is an additional atom at every face, so left, right, top, bottom, front, and back. So it's kind of crazy, but there we go. There are six faces. Every face is shared one half in one unit cell, one half in the other. So if we add those two together, right, we get one plus three equals four atoms. So we got four iron atoms inside our unit cell. And we want to know the mass of that. So remember on the periodic table, right, we can look up iron and we get a couple of bits of information. So up above, we get the atomic number, the number of protons. And down below, right, we get not the mass number, but the atomic mass. And that's the average weight of these atoms. And there's a couple of ways to interpret this. Uh, one way is we can interpret this as saying that one mole of iron weighs 55.85 grams of iron. So if we want to know how many grams that four atoms will weigh, it's kind of a tricky calculation. But uh, follow along. So we got four atoms of iron. Uh, what would that be in moles? Well, we know that there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms in a mole. Okay. And what else do we have? We know that there are 55.85 grams of iron 
in a mole. So we've converted atoms into moles. We don't normally do that, not for four atoms. It's a very tiny number. And then we multiply by 55.85 to get the total number of grams. And if we do that, we get a very small number indeed. And I'm gonna go ahead and move my screen up here a little bit if I can. So uh, let me see if I can get my screen. And uh, I'm just gonna move it up somehow. There we go. Okay, so now I need to go ahead and calculate that mass. So on my calculator, I get 3.7097. So the last two digits are additional guard digits times 10 to the minus 22 of a gram. So at this point here, I'm ready to calculate the density. So density is mass over volume. So I'm gonna to go to the lower left-hand corner here and I'm gonna plug in the mass. The mass I just calculated to be 3.7097 times 10 to the minus 22 of a gram and the volume right is a very small number 4.7046 times 10 to the minus 22 of a centimeter cubed and if we go ahead and we take those and we do the division um, we get 7.89 so notice those very small numbers right end up giving us a quite reasonable number here and the units are grams per centimeter cubed so we've been able to calculate the density from this unit cell data wasn't that pretty cool